Tina Wilson. The race that transformed my life. The race that transformed my life. Tina Wilson. Imagine you could do anything and not fail. What would you do? 20 years ago, I started a modeling company called Elite Stars while working my nine to five, wishing I could leave to be a full-time entrepreneur. Have you ever accomplished a goal that required you to wake up at the crack of dawn or break old habits that at one point seemed impossible to achieve? For me, it was completing my first full marathon 26.2 miles in the beautiful streets of Patty. I did it for that 14 year old inside me that always wanted to go to Paris and to prove to myself I actually could. <laughs> when I finally got across the finish line, I could barely get my arms over my head and realized anything is possible with preparation and hard work. Don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling of success. Life is a race, and we start with a 5K, which is 3.1 miles. February 26, 2016, my don't stop believing mentality was tested. My daughter, Divinity, was a dancer with the NBA, and my 21-year-old son had two sneaker stores. I was driving him to work this day. We'd call these mommy sometimes. This is what he said to me. I can't believe I spent all that money buying into that shop. It was my first store. After three months, we failed. I was lost and sad. Ha, but look at me now, two successful stores, Hey. I looked at him and I thought, you sure do have an attractive son. <laughs> if you were in the car with us, you would hear the music blasting and you would see a sun ray go right across his face. He looked at me with the most beautiful smile I've ever seen. He kissed me on the cheek, said, I love you, Ma, then jumped out the car. That moment is seared in my mind forever. You wanna hear about my half marathon? Ready, set, trigger warning, go. That night, Around 9.15, I got a phone call from my daughter. <laughs> Something happened to Jamal, get to Rowan now. I wasn't worried at first. I called Jamal, no answer. I called the police station and the hospital. They didn't have him. I even called the mayor of the town, nothing. When I got there, I noticed the street was blocked off with yellow and black caution tape. In the distance, I saw lights, and the street was filled with people all scrunched up together. That's what it looked like. Have you ever seen anything like that before? When I got to the shop, the door was locked, and a police officer said, you can't go in there. It was dark, it was cold. It felt like I was in a movie or something. I walked up to this police officer, and I said, where is my son? He said, as he looked at me with the most hurtful expression in his blue eyes, he said, I'm sorry, miss, your son is dead. At that moment, I realized my son was another statistic. The CDC reported Homicide is the leading cause of death for black males ages 15 to 34. Overcoming past tragedies prepared me for this moment and I knew I had to push through the pain or stay paralyzed. We move to the marathon phase. The next day I got a phone call. Hello, the sharing network, what is that? an organ donor company? My son was an organ donor? That phone call 
lasted about two hours because I was crying so much and they asked so many questions, I realized I had to make a difference in the world so his death had significance. I remember the time I lost my modeling studio because I couldn't afford the rent. He said to me, all successful people fail, Ma. Did you know that Warren Buffett only works with people if they fail five times or more? I didn't know that, but it sure did make me feel better. <laughs> I am happy to say that because of the inspiration of my son, I was able to leave my job. As an entrepreneur now, I've taught over 5,000 classes, oh, 5,001, I taught one this morning, and I have transformed the lives of over 50,000 people. My son told his friends, if I ever die, I want a program named after myself. So my daughter and I started a nonprofit called the Molly Gaines Program. It's for young men, ages 13 to 17. We give scholarships and teach them life skills. Because of our efforts, we won an Emmy Award for crime news. I share this to show you that even in the midst of disaster, things do get better. So I leave you with this medal. The belief behind the medal? Think of a goal, something you've always wanted. Dig deep for the why. Make a plan and then go for it. Don't stop believing and you'll always keep achieving. Let's all be like that song from Journey. Do you know what it is? Don't stop believing and hold on to that feeling of success, Madam Toastmaster. <laughs>